Hello, my name is Rachel Norris and I've been sent this fantastic um, owl mould uh, in food grade silicon by the lovely Joanne Jarrett or, of um, Craft Hut and I'm going to use them to make some beautiful chocolate bars um, so I can't wait to get started and uh, let's see what we can come up with. Um, we just need to go through the ingredients that we need um, and the the kit I suppose we need to make um, up the 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 uh, chocolate moulds. So first of all obviously you need a mould. It should be clean and dry and this one's got a bit of chocolate on it because I've only just washed it out from a previous one and it needs to be dry so that needs to go away and just be dry for a little bit before I use it because you don't want any water to go on the chocolate. So clean dry mould. Um, you need some um, food safe gloves if you're handling the food. In the video I show myself breaking up the chocolate into a bowl without gloves on and that's okay I suppose if you're cooking at home for your family but if you're going to give it away to friends or um, and give it as gifts I do recommend wearing some food safe gloves or rubber gloves or latex gloves or, or um, these disposable gloves just to make sure you're not handling the food not putting fingerprints on and things that shouldn't be in there and have your hair tied back and things like that so it's general sort of food safety stuff um what else do you need you need um uh, for me for the melting the chocolate i've got I have a pan of hot water and a glass mixing bowl that um, you can just use to melt the water in and let's explain a little bit more about that in a minute and about why it's used and a and a wooden spoon um to stir the chocolate um, so that's my basic stuff for melting it and some people melt um, the chocolate in a microwave and you can do that uh, about sort of 450 um, you know about, about a minute like a minute melt melting in the microwave just test it see if it's melted then put it back in for 30 seconds but I don't overdo it it's so easy to burn chocolate in a microwave if you just overdo it for a little bit so I tend to I use a bain marie so I'll show you how to use that and that's the saucepan and the water and the and the bowl over it so that's the sort of ingredients from that point of view um you will need a so you've done all the ingredients you need a flat um palette knife or um a I suppose what they call them sort of like a yeah like a palette knife um, like a cooking scraper it's got a lovely flat edge for scrape it put flat edges and it scrapes out the bowl for chocolate really nicely um i've got a set of oh you need um grease proof paper and a flat, i use a flat baking tray to set the mold on i'll just go and get that so i've just got a something flat so that i can put it into the the freezer and then I put um, grease proof paper um, over the set chocolate to keep it dry in the freezer and the freezer is great for, 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 for drying for trees and chocolate and um, also for decorating on I set it on grease proof paper um, but like this again which I'll do later um, then what we need I also have a set of um, little brushes which I use for painting the chocolate um, into the mould and for also dusting um, any colouring on. And you don't have to, you can have the, the chocolate as it is, but I'm just going to put a little bit of these mica um, powders on and they are edible. You can get edible, they're called edible luster or edible icing um, colours or icing, uh, you can get, and you get them for their sugar craft or their and they're edible silks that you can get them all sorts of ways you just look them up and you can have them in all sorts of colors um and then for packaging as gifts i just got some cellophane packaging and some ribbons and things like that which i'm going to package some up because it's coming out for christmas and i'm going to package them up nicely so i just got those um but you could put them in anything really um a little bit of grease proof paper will keep them nicely um don't keep chocolate in the fridge just keep it in a cool place cool dark place in a, in that tight container and it will store it'll last for as long as the um sell by date for the chocolate now moving on to the chocolate um, i just had a mixture of chocolates um and i'll tell you how much for each mold when i come to doing the mold but um you can use any such chocolate and i go from the cheaper um, Gillies chocolate and that we all love anyway up to the lint 
um, and depending on what people like. And they do say the better the chocolate, the better the mould. So, um, but obviously you've got to like the taste of it as well. I, I use a blend actually of, of those chocolates. I think that's it. Is there anything else I need? No, I think we can move on to actually um, melting off the chocolate. Remember, I didn't wear food safe, safe gloves in the video. Remember to put them on um, before um, breaking up the chocolate. So we'll move on to that now. I'm just going to set up something called a bain marie, which is going to be um, a saucepan of, of water, sort of um, half filled or so, maybe a third filled with water. And I'm popping that on the hob. Um, and that's basically when you melt chocolate over in a bowl, we'll keep it at the perfect temperature. Um, you're quite welcome to um, melt it in a microwave, um, melt the chocolate in a microwave, um, because that's really easy to do as well. Uh, you don't need to melt it for very long but I like working with this because it keeps the chocolate at the right temperature um, and you can work with it while it's still quite warm and keep it warm while you're working with it. So I'm going to come back to this when this is boiling and we're going to start to um, pop the, um, you can see the steam starting have to happen already but I just need to go and get a bowl and uh, break the chocolate into it and explain about that bit now. The next bit um, where I'm going to melt the chocolate, um, you've just got to make sure that no water goes in anything um, at all, into the chocolate I mean, because it just destroys its finish. Um, and I've, I've got very limited experience in working with chocolate, so this is a bit of fun for me. I'm not going to be perfect at this, and I know there'll be experts in, in making chocolate with moulds who'll, who'll scream at things that I do. But I'm just going to have a bit of fun with this mould and see what it, we can do. So I'm going to put um, a Pyrex glass bowl over the water and we need a wooden spoon to move the chocolate around. But you need to move it around as little as possible uh, because you don't want to destroy its, its lovely smith finish. I have washed my hands and make sure everything is lovely and clean and everything you're working with is lovely and clean, including your hands as well. So I'm going to break some chocolate into the bowl. Um, I'm using a mixture of chocolate. I'm going to use some really good... Um, high grade um, lint chocolate and some good old Cadbury's dairy milk because I've got a family who who aren't um, uh, so some people love their really good strong chocolates and some people like a good old bit of Cadbury's or something like that so I'm going to do a bit of a mixture for this one and see how it works again chocolate aficionados just use what chocolate you, you want to use, what chocolate you think will work well with this. Um, and you can see I'm breaking it in. And we'll just leave that for a moment because you don't need to do too much work to chocolate. Just really just very little movements. We'll let that, um, let that melt away. So I'm just going to leave that um, to one side for a moment while I just explain out how much chocolate I used. Now the mould, each mould will have a different volume. And it's approximately, it's not quite, um, it's something like um, nine, nearly, so it's nearly equal um, volume to weight, but it's not quite. So I always make a little bit too much chocolate than what you need, because you can always put it into other little moulds or use it for later. So um, this particular mould, let me go away and just look at it, was, was about a hundred and... 30 millilitres when I filled it with water and poured it out into a little jug so I knew how much um, it would take in there. Just make sure that everything's really dry when you're working with it though of course make sure this mould is very dry. So I poured the mould out into a jug and then I knew how much chocolate I'd need so I'm going to um, melt about 150 grams of chocolate. It's probably going to be a little bit too much, but rather too much than not enough, especially with these specialised moulds. And I've got some spare little sort of like ordinary like chocolate moulds for use with, um, which you can get as well. And you can use the spare chocolate in those and have them as well. So I'm going to just now move back to this chocolate and start to move it around just very gently. You don't need to do very much to it at all. I put 150 grams worth of chocolate in there um, and we'll see how it goes. You can see it's really working well. Just going to move that pan. It's um, a very small amount of water. It doesn't take long to melt. And in fact, actually, I know the microwaves um, are convenient, but 
it, you don't want to scald your chocolate. And working with a bain marie, you're never going to do that. So I'm going to do very little movement. We'll come back to that in just a second when it's melted. It won't take long at all. And as you can see, while I've been talking here now, it's pretty much um, all melted. We'll come back to back to, back to this in a second. Right, you can see this chocolate's um, pretty much um, melted. And you can see there's absolutely no little lumps or bits and pieces and the chocolate's pretty much mixed. Um, so it looks pretty good now. Um, but um, before I pour it into the mould, I'm just going to use a clean pe paintbrush, which I use for um, um, decorating cakes with. And I'm just going to brush over the mould um, with a bit of chocolate, just to make sure I fill in all the gaps. And this makes sure, really, that there's no bubbles on the surface. So I'm going to take it directly from the, this might take a little while, but directly from the pan, which is melting, it has the melted chocolate in. You can take it off the heat if you want to. I just want to make sure it's near the camera. Whoops, a daisy. And I'm just going to brush over the mould as much as possible on its surface to get um, everything a little bit covered, every nook and cranny covered. Um, and this, this means when I fill it, it's less likely to have a bubble on its surface, which will mar or um, spoil the pattern in any way. So I'll spend a bit of time doing that. And it's lovely, it's quite therapeutic, just to fill the mould with as much chocolate as you can. And then just gonna every little nook and cranny up with the little brush before we pour the main amount in. So I'm going to come back to that when all of that is done and show you. You can see I'm putting quite generous amounts on, it doesn't have to be. It just gives time for everything to, to set. I'm putting quite generous amounts on and then what we'll do is I'll come back to this when all this is ready. Just push the brush into the every little section to make sure there's no bubbles at all. It doesn't matter if it starts to set, um, to be honest, because we're going to pour more chocolate onto it at the end. So I'll come back in a few moments and show you the painted mould. Right, I've got the mould pretty well covered with lashings of delicious chocolate and you can see I've gone into every nook and cranny. and. Um, you could leave that to set, but I think I feel that there's enough, but there's no bubbles left in there. I've gone into all, and it's still quite melted actually, you can still work with it, but you don't want to overwork chocolate. So, you know, literally just layer it on and not, not overwork it. And what we can do is that next we could do is pour in um, the chocolate to fill the mould. So you need to get it onto a fairly level surface while we do that. So I'm going to do that and um, show you the next stage. Right, I've got the mould sitting on a fairly flat surface. Um, I know I'm working on the oven, but actually this is the bit that's turned off and I've got it on a heat pad. It just got it closer to where I can attach the camera. So I'm just going to pop some chocolate in to the, um, to the mould. Just pour it in now. Now, had it, it's, um, the mould itself is taking all the chocolate I probably could have put a bit more in to the melting. Let's see how that goes. Let's fill it all up. And I've got myself um, a little sort of, that's a little dog um, barking away. A little, um, what they call scraping. Um, I've got a wooden spoon to move the chocolate around, but this is, these are fantastic things. You can actually cake scraping, um, bowl scraping, um, little, 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 um, tools here and you can just move it around just very gently into the spaces. I know I probably just got the right amount so I put about 160 grams of chocolate. Oh, our bramble's really going for it, there must be a postman coming. It is Christmas time. So you can see I've really filled in everything I can and we can either let it level off naturally um, or we can just scrape it off. So you can use this um, this 
straight side if you've got a straight knife or a palette knife or something like that just scrape off the top of the chocolate like that you go one way and I'm going to go another way just to um, level that chocolate off and I know my chocolate's gone a bit limpy and that's probably because I used a um, slightly cheaper chocolate in there but it's delicious um, and I also combine the chocolate which you're going to be um, horrified about but um, I'm sure your chocolate will turn out better than that than this. I just level that off, um, and we're now going to let it set. Now you can pop it in the the fridge, um, um, or you can pop it in the freezer. Um, I pop mine in the freezer, which is makes it go quite quickly. You can see I've got most of the chocolate off the sides here, and any any spare you can any spare you can lick off. Don't do this too much it's starting to skin off already and i've probably overdone it now so i'm just going to pop a bit of grease proof paper over the surface of that and then we'll put it in the freezer just going to say um what i should have said um just as we were going to put the um, mold in the freezer you can tap the side of the mold before you put it in the freezer when it's still liquid just to make sure any bubbles come out. Right, here's a bit of greaseproof paper. I'm just gonna pop that over the top of this little little owl. It's already on a little tray, and I'm gonna put this into the freezer now. And then we, um, I haven't put any dusting in. I did try that first. I've got some ed edible icing dust um, and colors. Um, and you can do that. You can dust the mold first with it, but um, I've chosen to put it on afterwards and I'll show you how we can create these effects afterwards. So anyway, this is going in the freezer now and I'm going to get this out later today and see what comes out. I'm going to leave it for about um, two hours to be safe because it's quite a lot of chocolate. Um, but smaller molds I've managed to just leave for like half an hour, an hour. Um, but I'm going to leave this for a long time just to make sure it's really set. Okay, back later. Right, here's the exciting bit where we're going to um, get the chocolate out of the mould. It's been in the fruit freezer for quite a long time. And um, remember, that here you can see some bubbles because I didn't tap the side of the mould before I put it in the, the freezer. So what you can do, remember when it's warm, um, just tap the side of the mould a little bit just to get some bubbles out um, just before you pop it in the freezer. But I've got my gloves on now because we're handling chocolate and I don't want um, it to um, uh, get fingerprints on or any contamination. I am only giving them to family and friends, um, but I'm not going to get, sell them or anything. Um, so I'm just doing this for sort of fam and family and homely, home and friends consumption, but I've still got to keep as hygienic as possible. So I've got a bit of grease proof paper I'm going to set this onto. And I'm just going to gently loosen the mould and again if you're unsure that it's done properly just put it back and with 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 chocolate at least you can melt it and put it back again and redo it it's not the end of the world so I'm just going to gently gently loosen this mould around this little owl just take a bit of time just pressing just pushing around the side gently mould it moving this away just gently from the side. And usually the chocolate will shrink away from the side of the mould anyway. And um, we're just hoping this comes out clean. Just gonna take it really slowly, don't rush it because I don't want any bits to break off or anything like that. So in a minute I'm just going to take it over upside down and we'll see if it'll drop out yet. If it drops straight out onto the mould, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, is it nearly there? Let's have a little moment or two. It's always very exciting to get um, things out of moulds. There we go. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. He's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. That could be. That's good enough as it is. Yeah, that could um, go to somebody and they'd absolutely adore that, wouldn't they? Absolutely beautiful. But I'm going to just dust him over with some, some powders and... Um, some gold mica powders which I showed you in the ingredients list but we'll go through again I've got some edible um, uh, you can get these edible silks or you know the edibles of dusting mica powders and you can get these edible um, sugar craft paints and things like that and we're just going to put them over and the reason why I didn't dust them through the mold first 
was because I felt that they'd be disturbed a little bit. You know, they're quite fine detail. And um, that little bit's broken off, but it's not the end of the world. I can smooth that over. Um, and you can dust it with fine detail um, really, really easily with, with mica powders after with chocolate. It's not like resin where you have to have it impregnated into the resin. So I'm going to work on that next. Oh, how exciting. But the other thing you've got to do is make sure your mould is washed out with warm soapy water and clean ready for the next use. Um, so we're going to go on to doing some mica powder and um, um, decorations next in the next section of the video. Just quickly, if you do have any little bits and pieces that don't quite um, um, come out of the mould properly, there's several ways you can deal with it. Um, you can um, get a bit of um, molten chocolate and just stick it back on again, which would be quite easy to do. Remember, you should wear glass while doing this. And so get a little bit of molten hot chocolate, hot chocolate, and then stick it on, or pop um, pop the chocolate onto something warm, um, like at uh, the bottom of a, hot, a warm pan, um, and then stick it back on again. So I'm going to do that, and just stick this back on, and then we can move on to the next section. Other things you can do, I just use a little um, sharp knife or craft knife and just um, carve away at things too, so that if you feel a little bit of excess is there, you can just cut away or carve away at things with a little sharper knife, probably with a sharper knife than I've got here, and just cut away and trim things down if you feel that they're not quite as sharp as you'd like them to be. Here you can see I've just used a little bit of molten chocolate to, to stick this element back together again, and you can just use a, a knife just to smooth over any join, and things like that. So I just touched it against a hot, a pan that was uh, had, um, inside of a pan that had been um, in a stove, uh, just a little, or you know, just the edge of a mug of hot water or something like that. And it just warms it enough, even um, on the edge of your gloves, because the warmth of your fingers can do it. As long as you're in the hygienic gloves, you can do that. So you can see I stuck that bit back on again, so it's it's back together. Right, um, I'm just going to move on to the next bit, which is the, the dusting. Right, um, what I've done, I have decanted um, some of the um, paints and powders I'm going to use onto a plate, rather than dipping it in out of a bowl. A bit of an accent with the blue, but there we go. Um, and we'll see what, what um, effects we can create. I've got some little brushes, and I'm going to brush dip things on and brush them. So I might go for a gold eye first. I'm going to use some of the liquid paint that I have first of all. And we're just going to go for some gold on the eye, which looks lovely. There we go. I'll pop it in there. Like that. A bit more on the other eye. This is fun. This is the fun bit actually, isn't it? Where you're going to go through just pick out all the details that you want to pick out. You can see how beautiful that is. And then I'm going to pick out some, I'm going to put a bit of dusting around here of a bit of yellow, which is sort of a lighter gold. I'm just going to dust that in. And you've got to rub it in a little bit. And this is a bit that will work in, in the base of the moulds. This powder stuff works quite well in the base of the moulds as well. Right here, and I'm going to take it out to here and use some of that. So you can see it's starting to develop its colour around. This is this is such good fun. I'm going to take a little bit more, I think, of this liquid gold, which I've got with a different brush, um, and then bring it out onto some of these little tops. See, so just that the where the the chocolate mould has come out with those top bits which are a bit more elevated you can use some of this liquid paint I'm going to bring some of this red powder in and bring it in around the base of the, the owl there's a bit of colour here and bring it over his beak I might put some gold onto that as well so you can see how you can use all sorts of oh my goodness it's such good fun I literally am going to have such good fun with this owl now so if we start painting different colours over him it's all edible, so it's lovely, really. Oh, this is good fun. Um, really lovely. So I'm going to put more gold on his beak. Definitely gold on the beak. You can't have a, an owl without gold on the beak. And see how that you can just develop this 
now onto being beautiful here like that. And then I'm going to put a bit more, bit more colour here, a bit more gold around here, a bit tiny touch of gold around here. And then what I'm going to do is bring in some um, different colours for the top. So let's bring in some some greens to the top of the other the top of it of his plumage up here. So I'm going to bring in a bit more green powder here. Really make it lovely. And I'm going to carry on a little bit of green to the top. We're going to just take away so I'm going to really bring that into the little um into the gaps in between. So I'm going to push push the colour in a bit more and then really judge it around here. And then what can I do? I'm going to bring a bit more of that gold paint up. As you can see, the liquid paint is going to fit over onto the top. Oh, everyone, the, everyone's come in from school, which is lovely. So you can hear a little bit of that coming in. A little bit of silver, a little bit of, sorry, a bit of gold liquid onto the top. You can see how I'm just embellishing that colour. So I've put some deep colour in to the depths and then brought in a bit of highlight gold onto the, the the areas of the owl that more raised. You can see how it's looking really spectacular already. So I'm going to move on. Just taking it, just little flecks of gold all over the owl as much as I can. And then I'm going to go and decorate the rest of the body Right, I'm going to just put some blue into the into the centre part of the owl. Some lovely blue on the side here. Really push it into the into the body of the owl here. Let's see, all around the base here. So it basically builds up quite quickly. All of this, but as long as I get him balanced, and I've got a nice variety of colours, so I can really um, enjoy blending as well so you can put I put big panels of colour here of the blue and I'm going to put green on his centre which then I'm going to enhance with the gold as well so I'm going to do that now and I'm going to put some red by the side of his wings and again I'm building this all really up really quickly a bit more by the side of the wings here I'm going to bring some blue down into the tail with a bit more red by the side of it. Again, um, the more you rub the brushes onto the chocolate, the more it kind of blends in and, and seals into the surface um, because it will just attach a bit more. It's edible, so it doesn't matter if it does come off a little bit and you're eating it. It's meant to be, it's not meant to be forever. This is meant to be eaten. So I'm put some brown across the, across the branch and then we're going to start putting some gold on um, everywhere else. So I've got as much, all the colours everywhere that I want to have and I want to get some more green into that central bit. A bit more green. So I think we're doing quite well. So let, on goes the gold now. So we're going to bring the gold paint in and start to pop along the branch. I'm going to do the branch definitely in the gold. We need it to stand out and I need the edge of the tail. There we are. Just, just, you don't need too much. Claws definitely need to go into gold. Lots of gold there. Whoops. Now, what I'll do is with that, just need to dab a bit more blue on that. Clean the brush, get a different brush. If anything happens, just pop some more gold um, blue over, then pop the gold on top so it's not the end of the world. You can see how I've made that disappear. So, a little bit of gold paint all over everywhere else. Not too much. Now, just kind of just giving it a um, can you shut the door, Pete, my lovey? I'm um, just going to just do a little bit of gold dusting over the wings, over the side of the face. Here, yeah, looking really just on the edges of the feathers, really to make it look really smart. And then I'm just going to pop some colour over his tummy, and I'm doing a sort of rubbing of the gold now, rather than it being too too intense, just over those features. And again, I'm going quite quickly. You can spend as much time as you like doing this. A bit more gold here and just building it up 
you see has really, really, sh this beautiful pattern that Jo has got into her moulds is coming out there looking lovely. So I'm just going to rub the gold over the feathers now. Oops, a bit too much there, so I'll take it away. You can see how this is really building up beautifully. So I've got a mixture of li the liquid gold and, I got, and the edible mica. And I'm just about finished. You can see how quickly that, that came, that owl was done. And we're done. I think, I mean, you could keep going on forever, but I think that's lovely. And I'm really happy with that. So that's an owl ready, um, done in less than five minutes, I reckon. Ten minutes at the most, um, painted up. I'll take some photographs of that. If you can see, he's ready. I'm going to let him um, dry a little bit and then I can package him up um, as a present for my family. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, making these, um, these uh, lovely chocolate moulds and um, I'll pop a link in for Jo um, and the, the uh, craft hut um, into this video so you can find her. Here's the uh, little chocolate owl sitting in a, in a light box. I'm going to photograph him. Um, he's the first one. I've made and I'm really happy with the, um, the mould and how it's come out and also how easy the colours were to apply and how easy they were to pick out detail and make him look really spectacular. So um, thank you Joe, for producing such a beautiful mould and um, they're, they're already lining up in the family about who's going to taste, taste the chocolate first. So I've got a few to make now. Um, in time for Christmas. Take care then everyone. Bye-bye.